Hello, long time no see. Um, haven't got out for any prospecting in quite a while. Um, unfortunately the weather's just been horrible. Um, the rain has just been unseasonably intense. Um, so there's been a lot of flooding and stuff and the creeks are just way, way too high to get into in the areas I normally go to so that's been disappointing. Um, but I've kept myself busy in the meantime. Um, one of the things I did was I got myself a 3D printer and I printed up this little sluice. So that's what this video today is going to be about. I'm just going to show you how um, how I designed it, um, what program I used, and I'll just show you a little bit of that. And then I'll show you how I printed it, connected it up together, and then later in the video I'll show you um, how I tested it. I'm going to run it. I haven't tested it yet, but I'm going to run it up against the Angus McCurt grub stake, um, which is pretty much exactly the same as in size. Um, and yeah, we'll see how it fares. Um, Considering this costs $19 in materials to build, um, just for the ABS, and the Angus McCurt grub steak costs $140 in stores right now, um, Australian, and that's not including postage. Um, so considering that, if this works 90% as well as the Angus McCurt grub steak, then I think we'll be onto a winner. Um, looks like it will, I don't see why it won't, so um, I'm pretty excited to get out there and test it. Okay, here you can see uh, just the platform that I used to design the sluice. Uh, it's Tinkercad at tinkercad.com if you're interested. Um, it's really basic. It's um, just pretty much as basic as you get. You had, don't need any skill at all to use it. Um, I have no idea with CAD 3D design, and this is what I came up with. As you can see, so that's the 3D model there. And on the right here, you, you can see you just pick shapes. Um, you then place them down onto the board, and you just resize them. It's as simple as that really. So I just basically did that. Yeah, you can see here now. You can just resize by dragging and clicking and dragging. So really easy program. And here's just a better view, better 3D view and another app of the sluice. So that's as you can see it's a drop ripple design. Um sort of modeled I guess after the grub stake, Angus McKirk. Um nice and simple. In hindsight after I printed it I probably could have made the ripple sections a bit shorter. But it is what it is, and it seemed we'll see if it works later in the video. And here's just the printing up. Maybe you print up printing it up. Just show you a few different stages of that. I have to put a box over it during printing just to keep the ambient temperature inside the machine or around the machine at about 40 degrees Celsius. So this is why it's dark here, I'm just using the light inside there. And that's hopefully to prevent warping. I keep it if I don't have a box on there it warps like crazy. Um, this is the ABS material but you can see even on this one here on the bottom right hand corner it's warped up a little bit. Um, thankfully didn't matter too much um, as it was just the support material. By the time it started printing the actual part, it just used the flat surface that was there, so that was okay, thankfully. But yeah, here's the part almost finished. It's the last couple of layers it's putting on now. It's a pretty nifty little machine. So now I'm onto the gluing, gluing it together part. Um, I was originally when I designed it, thought that I might uh, use a bit, a few rivets to keep it together. But um, I've been using this ABS slurry, which is just some acetone with some scrap ABS from the support structures from these. Just dissolve it in there and you get this thick um, glue, basically. It's called ABS slurry, ABS glue, or ABS juice, depending on the thickness you make it. Um, it basically bonds, the, melts the plastic, bonds it together, so you get a nice, strong grip. Um, so yeah, this is how it's been printed out, just in parts, like about this big. Um, there's one, two, three, four, five, and two for the flare. Um, and you can see how I've designed it. So the end of this one is thinner, a bit wider on this one, so that it can just be slotted in like that. And that's basically how it'll go. It doesn't stay in nicely now. Um, but once I get the glue in there, it'll close it up nice. 
Um, I, can't, I didn't get it perfect, so when they do join, there is a little bit of a gap in there. Um, but I just fill that in with, as I've done on this one, I mean, it doesn't look pretty. But that's just filled in with some of that AUS slurry, so that's nice and solid and hard in there now. Same with the flare area. And um, yeah, we'll just do the same with these gaps all down the side here. And probably on the outside as well, and I've already done it on the bottom. Anyway, I'll get that glued up, I'll show you. That's the glue applied, I don't have much time, so I'll just quickly put the end in. I'll have to put the camera down for this though. And there we have it, that last piece is in and glued. Um, I just need to sort of hold it here for a minute or two. It doesn't take long to dry though, um, because the ABS, I mean the acetone, evaporates pretty quickly. But um, that's pretty much it. Now once that bit's glued together, I'll just fill in all the little gaps. It should take me about 10 minutes. Right, I've got that end piece connected up now, glued up. Sealed the holes. Everything's drying up now. So that's the entire sluice put together. If it'll focus. Um, and that's all the holes sealed. So now I'll just, yeah, just need to let that sit for about 24 hours, completely cure. Alright, so I've come out here now, I've got the, um, the two sluices, I've got the grub steak and my little homegrown variety. I'm just about to run this bucket through, probably just go half the bucket there, half the bucket there. Um, not the best test in the world, I understand the gold might go to the bottom, but I can't, I can't find anywhere to set up the two sluices side by side, so I'm just going to have to run um, a little bit in one, a little bit in the other. And hopefully that'll show us if it works or not. I'm sure it will. But um, yeah, the river's way up. Struggling to find anywhere to set up. I had to walk like about, I don't know, about 500 metres upstream to be able to find this spot. So I was just about finished um, with that bucket, feeding it through. I ended up doing the whole bucket. And right near the end, when I was just about finished, I dropped a rock down there and it blew water all over it, blew out the first, first ripple. So that's not good, but I mean, straight up you can see it's, um, there's black sands in there quite nicely. More towards these first couple than the last few, so it definitely seems to be doing its job. Um, I may as well just get into a pan now and have a look at it. So here's the results from that bucket. You can see that. Some really fine gold there. Um, you can see my finger up against it. It's really fine stuff. Um, so yeah, sluice definitely seems to do its job. Um, pity I blew out that first ripple low. It would have been nicer to see all the black sand sitting in there, but I mean it was doing its job up until I stuffed it up. It's clearly not the best spot to set up the sluice, but there's just nowhere else. All these places are just too deep. Um, yeah, it's struggling. Anyway, so I'm probably not going to run it next to this one now, just because it's such a pain in the ass. Just not good prospecting out here today. So I'll, um, yeah, I'll probably call it a day, I reckon. Consider that a success. Um, yeah, I might, I'll definitely use it again in future videos when the weather's a bit better. Um, give you a better look at it. Put for its paces, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, cool. Alright, see ya.